Hello and welcome to another edition of The Pastor's Heart. I can't wait to get into this week's topic and discussion. Uh, we have uh, I'm just excited about it, but can't, I can't wait. Um, so excited about this, but I do want to remind you, always at the top of the program, we talk about the prayer line. The prayer request line is there for you 24-7. You can call and leave a, a prayer request message or a praise report. 478-474-3986 or prayer at WGNM.com. I know you want to take advantage of that. You can call and leave your prayer request there and we will pray for you. We come into agreement with you on uh, uh, and to see things happen, to see God move in your life. And if you've got a praise report, I always like to encourage you to leave those praise reports. We love those. We collect those and we treat those specially because uh, that's God moving in people's lives. It doesn't have to be something we prayed for. It doesn't have to be, uh, we love it when you call in with a prayer request and then call in with a follow-up praise report, but it doesn't have to be something we prayed for to call in a praise report. We love giving God praise. And when you praise God for something he's done in your life, that's going to encourage others uh, give and, and, and strengthen the faith of others uh, as they hear those praise reports, especially if they're going through the exact same thing you've gone through. I always like to remind you too, uh, we are a viewer supported ministry, so we need your help. Uh, all we ask is that you pray, ask God how you can help, and then obey what he tells you to do. It's about that simple. Uh, so you can go to WGNM.com. There is a donate button up al along the top, and you can give securely through our website. Uh, and the address can come up on the screen, and, and uh, you can send a check or money order there as well. Uh, so we, uh, we love you and just want to make sure you understand that. My guest today is somebody that I have come to love, love, love uh, over the last few months. Uh, so excited to have Apostle Buddy Crumb from the Life Center in Atlanta. So thank you for joining us well, today. Thank you for the opportunity, Rip. It's, it's always good to be with you and the people here in this area. It's it's a pleasure. Thank you. I think we'll just have a good time. Today. I think we're going to too. Uh, we may irritate some people and we may uh, educate some people. That's going to be kind of... <laughs> that could happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Apostle Buddy Crumb is the uh, one of the leaders and founders of the Life Center uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, normally we, we tend, tend to focus on on local ministries, but today, this week, we're going to talk uh, with Apostle Buddy, not so much, although we are going to give you some information about the Life Center, um, but we're also going to be talking about uh, true apostolic prophetic Reins, how would you say it? <laughs> well, I, I think the, that you're headed in the, the right new direction. revelation, and not yeah. really a new revelation, but restoration, people are restoration. I, I knew it was an R word. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Life Center in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, or in the Atlanta area, uh, you can find them at lifecenter.org on the internet. You can also go to Facebook, they have a Life Center Ministries page. Uh, and they have a, a YouTube page as well, so they, they put out video stuff. And Apostle Buddy, you've started doing a few things in Middle Georgia, in the Middle Georgia yes. re region, it was, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to bring you in and talk about this so that people could understand uh, whenever there is something going on here in town that they'll understand where you're coming from and what you're, what you're expecting to see happen here in Middle Georgia. Right. But before we get into that, because that's really all of our teaching, uh, I want to just ask, how did if you could just go through the uh, initial origins of uh, Life Center, how your background and and how y'all got <laughs> all uh -huh. all into this thing? Well, we've been uh, my wife Mary and I have been doing this for quite a while, right? And, uh, but it's interesting how God 
always works, and he worked that way with us. But we, I, I thought that uh, I was safe, and it was radical for me. And I felt a pull from the Lord to, to be a preacher, but I also wanted to be a businessman. Mm-hmm. I had a desire to be a businessman. So it, it was an easy decision because business people make money. <laughs> <laughs> And so I chose to go that way and went to after college and after the military. I uh, began working in the business world and uh, progressed through that and found my, my area of expertise was in the stock market. And I started as a stock broker and then he progressed. And from there, and we were... Uh, and then, but God really had me as an entrepreneur, and I mm-hmm. want to bring that back later Rip, right. when we start talking about the apostolic a little more in depth. Right. But I was an entrepreneur, and being in the investment business, I evolved into the investment banking business. And uh, we had, uh, I had, as an entrepreneur, had success, and as an entrepreneur, I had some failures. So, you know. <laughs> I, I know what it is to be, as Paul said, up, or I know what it is to be down. Right. But we, uh, and at that time, we were very faithful, both of us, to the church and uh, involved in the church as a church layman. Right. And But business was predominantly where my heart was, and, and God blessed us that way. And we uh, ended up finally with our own investment banking. There were uh, partners in it, firm. And uh, we grew that uh, to about 37 states and uh, had uh, 1,100 uh, brokers working with us. So at that point, we were, uh, I was at a place where I felt like that I was really on the right track. Sold that business to a Fortune 500 company and uh, at that point, I went into the consulting. Now, my background as business was very much in depth in the area of finance. Again, we'll bring that point back. <laughs> but uh, and in developing businesses, and so I felt like, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. At that time, I also became. Very, I thought I was an evangelist. Mm-hmm. And I joined the Gideon ministry being a businessman and right. for six years, but I also was one of their speakers at the conventions and did street ministry and led a lot of people to the Lord. Later, when we became more involved in the church, I thought I was a teacher because mm-hmm. my wife and I were, she was a teacher uh, by education. So we thought we were teachers. And so we went from evangelist to teacher and then God called us pretty dramatically at that time to leave the business and go into ministry. And that was quite a change for me, a right. transformation. And so I, I did. We were at a, uh, at a conference, matter of fact, and we were just being introduced to the prophetic ministry and uh, coming with our background, uh, more traditional. That was a big change for right. us and we but we we could tell it was God and particularly my wife she really related to it because Mary is a, a prophet right so God called us down and he said this day or the the bishop called us down and said this day you're to lay down your business and make a transition in the ministry I I thought that I looked around to see who God was speaking to because <laughs> it didn't fit my agenda right. at all. So that was a little bit of background of how at that point we were now in the prophetic. And so we, and I took on the role as a pastor. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't start a church. We started a ministry to right. introduce the prophetic. But after about a year or so, there was a core group of people that wanted to have a church. So right. that's that's what we did. So that's a little background to right. give you of how we got to that point of right. uh, <laughs> five-fold ministry is what we call it. Well, um, what we want to talk about a little bit is, um, uh, too, is, and that gets us up to a point, uh, and you mentioned the prophetic 
and the prophetic and the apostolic kind of go hand yes, in hand. Um, and let's do um, uh, what we're going to talk about right now is let's go back to the biblical foundation of the apostolic and prophetic. Okay. And, and if you could talk just a little bit about that for me and, and explain to us how this how this was when the because the apostolic and prophetic was there in the New Testament church. Yes. Uh, explain to us a little bit about how we got away from this. Well, we in it tells us in Ephesians two twenty that it is the the foundation or the cornerstone is Christ, mm -hmm. and then the foundation the prophets and the apostles. And I think in uh, it we are all familiar with Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. And when they began their journey as apostles, of course, Paul was very dramatically called, as we all know, on the road to Damascus. And then out of that, it, they went to Antioch through the persecution, and he and Barnabas went to Antioch. And Antioch was a sending out center. They equipped them, to, and for about four years, Paul stayed there with Barnabas, and then at the right time, he, he was released to go and to begin to start churches. Peter, on the other hand, was in Jerusalem, and if you study his life, he never traveled out from Jerusalem very far. And so we already in the early stages had the, I won't call it contrast, but you had the uh, traveling one, being Paul and Barnabas, who established churches, went into new areas, dealt not only with the miracles, but the resistance that they had. Mm -hmm. And they had to, they, there was a boldness about them and, a, and right. a very aggressive personality. We know Paul was very persistent. I've, I've often thought that with his background as a Pharisee, he would have been perfect to send to the Jews. And he did go first to the Jews, as we know, then to the Gentiles. Right. But you see, uh, Peter was more of a pastoral. Right. And in Jerusalem, he was there, and they, there they, he enjoyed being a pastor. And then there was Paul, but as churches began being planted and pastors put in those churches, that became the model was more of a Peter model than a sending out Paul model. Right. And so we shifted more to that model, which was a teaching model. And today, the church is predominantly a teaching right. uh, centers uh, where, where pastors take care of the flock, but they teach. And so that was the foundation. And that's when we say restoration, God is bringing that back, mm -hmm. that same original model, because we it's time to make a change. The church needs to change. Right. And let's get into the way, like you said, right now it's a Peter model right now where yes. it's more teaching. Um, and one of the effects, and in, in, in with this program, I get to talk to a lot of okay. pastors. Yes. I get a lot. Uh, and then in this position that I'm in with the TV station, I get to talk to a lot of pastors. And I get talked to quite a bit. Um, and, they, they, and I love the fact that they tend to open up to yep. me. Um, and there's, they're, they're under so much pressure. Um, let's talk a little bit about why they're under pressure with, since we're not dealing with this other two things, we've taken those two things right. and expect them to do it. Well, you know, even in the field of pastoring, it is still more like the professional, mm -hmm. the professional pastor. And there's such a demand upon them. And, uh, I know I, I pastored for six or seven years and then I started traveling uh, in the marketplace ministry and, and my wife became the pastor and then she had been traveling doing the prophetically but they have pressure to take care of everybody in mm -hmm. all of their needs and and uh, unfortunately you might say that that has put a demand on them that is quite tiring I I know it can it can wear you out mm -hmm. the demand I call it the five-fold ministry man where they have to be a possible prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Exactly. And, and they, they have a high expectation upon them. 
You know, and they it's its like we're expecting them to do everything. Like we're, we don't want to do the work of the ministry like we're supposed to. Right. So we expect them to do all of the hospital visitation, all the marrying, all the burying, all the prayer and, and going to visit people, all the evangelism, all the, you know, if we, if we can, we consider evangelism sometimes now just to bring people in. And let the pa- let the pastor talk to them. Right. Let the pastor fix them. Right. <laughs> and, and marriage counseling, pre-marriage. Counseling. Right. 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 And it's just it's so um, stressful, and Very it's something demanding. that um, yeah. we just can't uh, we can't figure out what's what's going on. And, and really, the solution is to bring this back. Yes. And uh, so we're talking a little bit about that. How does the apostolic compare to the pastoral led church? Well, I think that, uh, again, if we compare the models, we need pastors, and they're very, all five-fold ministry are needed, but certainly the pastor has a very responsible place. Uh, I know we have uh, four pastors, and uh, so that they are always attentive to the needs of the people. But I don't expect them to cast vision. I don't expect them to open up new areas of opportunities for us. And, uh, and, but they're there and they enjoy, if that's the right word, or respond to being used that way. They want right. to pray for people. They yeah. love praying for people. They, 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 their time is committed to that end. And I don't, I pray for people. Don't misunderstand. That. Right. <laughs> I don't want to give the wrong impression, but I, I do pray for people. I um, I meet with those I need to. If there's a, an issue we need to deal with, I, it comes to me. Right. But as far as somebody just calling and saying, Joey's sick, or my daughter's sick, or mm-hmm. we need prayer, or my we get all, prayer all day about my friend's Mother's sick, you right? Know. And uh, the pastors are they they take care of that. Well, and they're you know one of the things they're equipped for that, and it's no. a it's an awesome role, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And I, it's amazing to see when you find a pastor who's when he understands that role, mm-hmm. and he loves being in that mm-hmm. role. Some of the things they do would drive me crazy, well, but no they question. love it. Yeah. And they, they, when, you know, if somebody wants to call and, and I love praying for people, like you said, and stuff like that, but, uh, I'm really bad at following up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Hey, we prayed for this. Did, how did that work? I'm more of a, Hey, let's pray. And and we'll, you know, I'm, I'm off to something else. Absolutely. (laughs) And so when, when I discovered that, that I, I think it was relieving to me one day when I found out that I knew that I wasn't a pastor, um, and that the Lord had something else for me mm-hmm. to do within the body, and so it was really um, it was freeing. But then I see I see more clearly now those who fit into there and they love it. They're in their lane, and they're not trying to. You know, it's. It, I think that's one of the things about the apostolic and prophetic that even I've learned in the last just for because you're always learning something. Right. That it's not this. I always looked at it as like this top down. Right. Model this this pyramid structure of you know we're 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 about to network market this thing or mm-hmm. but it's not that at all. No, it and it is really the reason I when I first took on the title of apostle it was very uncomfortable because I knew that people would uh, look at it the way you were describing right. it and I didn't want that to be but neither did I want them to put expectations on me pastoral expectation right. and be disappointed. Right. And uh, if there was, and it, we have it kind of say it this way. Some people will support you no matter what, and they will stay with you until the very end. Whatever that end is, if it's, uh, I've had pastors that would literally go to people's home, watch TV with them when they were couldn't get out of their homes just to give them some, spend time with them. Right. The way I would do it, and you would do it, Rip, is we'd say, I, I think we've already talked about this once before. Yes, we have. <laughs> why, why are we meeting again, you know? <laughs> but, uh, and so we would support them to a point. 
Right. And in that, but and that's the personality of an right. apostolic personality. It's not a short attention span. It's to the point. It's a focus. Right. And it, it, why? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose right. for what we're doing? It. And it's very difficult for for either a pastor to try to be apostolic or an apostle to try to be a pastor all the right. time. And that's where some of this pressure you were talking about. Well, and and, and we're, we're beginning to lay the foundations here in the, because here in middle Georgia, we have, I believe, uh, this is the, one of the solutions. A lot of people talk about Macon being very, you know, there's a church on every corner. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, um, there's a famous line in a, in a novel written about Savannah uh, where, you know, they, uh, they'll ask in, in Atlanta, they'll ask what you do. In in Macon, they ask what church you go to, <laughs> and um, it's very much that way. That's, I, I find yeah. that to be a very true statement. Um, and we've put so much pressure on pastors, and we see them breaking down under that pressure. How do we start to lay the foundation back again for the reintroduction of the apostolic problem? What's the steps to take? Uh, over an area? Well, I think that it's a good question, and I, and I, it's it demands a good answer. But to say it this way, I, I really believe that the process that the Lord is bringing us to restore back the apostolic, I think the reason it is, and there are several other factors that are beginning to look at that. I think, for example, Breaking out of training up the saints, or preparing the saints to do the work, the ministry is a big transition. It's what you were saying that the pastor is expected to do all, be all. Right. But the pastor, the apostle's job is to be sure that the saints are equipped to do the work of the ministry. Right. Wherever they are. I say it this way you're a minister 24 7. And if your cubicle is cubicle is six by four, then take dominion over that. Right. That is when it says take dominion, that's your area, your kingdom space. Right. And so I think as we talk about change our language, we start talking about kingdom. And that is meaning not just us four and no more, but God's movement to take back all that rightfully belongs to him. I think there was a big change in that when we were introduced to the seven mountains. Right. And I believe that now we begin to see that that every area of life is a kingdom. Right. Where we need to take that mountains through the power of influence or being able to make change. And so you you begin to see the language, the narrative is changing. And so kingdom... And even the word church is beginning to be replaced with ecclesia, ecclesia, and uh, because it means more than the local church, it means the body of Christ dynamically moving among. And we need this change. So how do we do it? First, it begins with education like anything else. You You have to educate the people that apostolic is more of a position or a function than a title. Right. And and I think that if people look at authority, and apostles did have authority, and they do should have authority. Right. But it is not a ruling authority. It's it has its place. I think one of the scriptures, and I, I'm I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head, but one of the scriptures that talk about this talks about the foundations. <clears throat> of the apostles and prophets. Right. And the Lord began to show me that there, because it also talks about Jesus as the cornerstone. Right. And uh, then the foundation of apostles and prophets, if you're building a building, they're, they're going to help you stay plumb. Because they're, mm-hmm. they're and, and then as we're building this building of ecclesia in a region, that uh, it's the teachings of the apostles and prophets that gives us foundation. It's more of a foundational government exactly. than it is yeah. a rule, do what I say type thing. It's like, hey, look, if you want to stay in plumb, if you want to stay uh, accurate, if you want to stay in line with what Jesus did and what he has laid down, then, hey, we're teaching you how to do that. And, hey, hey, you're getting out of, mm-hmm. if something starts going awry, then, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, we need to get back this way. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so I'm looking, as, as I've been praying over the region of middle Georgia, um, 
my thing, my focus has been that foundational. Uh, but then also breaking off of some traditions. We've talked a yeah. lot uh, in recent programs about breaking off some of these man-made traditions. We'll, we'll get a little deeper into that. Um, but we we have some foundational scriptures that we're going to get into uh, throughout the course of the week. We haven't thrown out a lot of scriptures right. yet, but we do want to let you know this is a that we do have scriptural basis for this, right. and we, we're going to get into all of that. But I just want you to know that as as far as this the station is concerned, we are so focused on doing uh, uh, of giving an atmosphere where apostolic and prophetic movement can grow. Uh, and when I say that, I mean proper apostolic, not just the titles that you were talking about. Right. Um, I talk a lot about uh, uh, Vista Print apostles and prophets, people mm -hmm. who just go out and, and buy, get a set of business cards that say uh, apostle or prophet. Uh, real quickly, we got about maybe a minute and a half. Talk about some of the general struggles that an apostle or a prophet will go through in order to, that when they're really doing their job correctly. <laughs> Well, and and I, when we began the prophetic, and that, that was how God called us into the ministry. And again, my wife was very good at activating and teaching how people not are prophets, but how they hear the voice of the Lord. Right. It was not that you're a prophet, but you can hear the voice of the Lord. Apostolic is saying that there is a government, meaning a structure, a form that will allow us to break through those religious spirits that you've described right. as tradition, we can call them tradition, that have held the church back. Mm -hmm. We'll later on talk about how little right. influence the church has, but at one time it was the most influential right. area, and Absolutely. it's lost that. And it's because we have clustered into oh, yeah. our local churches and become more and more comfortable with that. Well, you know, and I think that's probably where the enemy has succeeded the most is getting yes. us, especially if we can get into our little cluster yeah. and we can then talk bad about the other cluster. <laughs> that's right. And how they don't match up to what we say. We, Makes us we, feel better. I know. We set up all the rules and say we do A, A B, C, D, and E. Well, they don't do D. Right. And so they must be wrong. Must be. Uh, they have to be wrong. They, they Now, they've got uh, A through E except for D, and then they go on to the, some of the other letters, and they do stuff that we don't do, yeah. so they, they've got to be wrong. Yeah. And we the, I think the finger-pointing thing really, I want to snatch some fingers uh, off. Uh, that's about all the time we've got for today, uh, yeah. and, and we, we're opening up a can of worms here. I just can't wait. Um, that's all the time we've got for today. Uh, we're going to be talking with Apostle Buddy all week long about this, and we're going to be opening this up and explaining it to you. And I'm hoping some pastors are watching because we love pastors here, uh, but we want to make sure that you're that in that proper role. We'll see you next time.